Hey there, Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Wanted to talk a little bit about weather today. Now get ready. Here we go. <laughs> um, weather rings pretty true to most of us because weather is the quickest way to ruin your day at the amusement park. Because once you know, like, oh, once it starts raining, rides start shutting down. And rides shut down in the rain pretty much because either the drive tires that move the train forward are having trouble gaining traction or a lot of times what happens it's actually a load and unload surface that you get in out of the train on um, that becomes really slippery and once that surface becomes slippery even though the ride may be functioning perfectly fine they have to shut it down because it's now a hazard to get on and off the vehicle so another one of the things that most people don't think about too much is wind and wind is a really really nasty gremlin um, flat rides and things that spin and, and small rides like that they don't really care anything that's powered they don't really care about wind so much unless it's a big tall like swing structure then it might have an anemometer on top just to make sure that the structure is not under um, under too much strain when it's being blown really hard in one direction or the other but um one thing we had really we had uh one morning we had a really windy day at the park and we had we're running our floorless coaster and at the time it was like questionable as to whether or not to send that roller coaster because when they're in the morning when roller coasters are cold and they're unloaded there's no weight in them they run much slower than they do during the afternoon when they're nice and hot and warmed up so the thought of a coaster valleying always comes up front and center when it's in the morning time, especially if there's a little bit of wind. So the mechanic had said, I'm going to run it, which was fine. We let the mechanic make that, that decision. That was no big deal. So then they called me up and they said, hey, this ride had what was called, it was a fault. It was called short block penetration, which means that as the train came into its block segment in the mid run the sensors that read the left and the right wheel carriers as they came in they also do the real-time telemetry for the speed those sensors had gotten a low count and they basically said "Uh oh the trains going too slow so they locked the brakes up so the first problem with the short block penetration is you stick the back bunch of coaches outside the block brake so first problem is we have to go up there and open the brakes up manually and pull the train in so it's not all hanging off the back. It's sometimes it's to the point where we literally are concerned about the train rolling backwards at that point. It's not into the block far enough. So I went up there with two other employees and we went up there and we were with one train in the block, which is where I was, and one train at Lift Park. That's the very top of the lift hill. That's the last, that's the end of the next block segment up there. So we had one train up there at the park, one train in the block segment. So we kind of pulled like uh, some parks do. We manually opened the brake and we did the whole bobsled push start on that thing. And we got a bunch of us up there and pushed the train out as hard and as fast as we could to give it some sort of momentum to finish the course. And it did. It finished the course just fine. We weren't too concerned about it. But it was really windy. And up on top of the block brakes, which were about 60 feet up in the air, it was even windier up there. So I knew up at the top of that lift hill, it was even windier than it was on top of the block brakes. So I wanted to get that down off of there because the park was about to open and I just didn't want the train sitting up there because that's when people take all sorts of pictures and then they start loading all sorts of venom up like oh man look the ride broke down it stopped again like oh it's a death trap blah 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 so just didn't want the negative repercussion that comes from leaving a train on top of the lift hill even though there's nothing wrong with it sitting there whatsoever and uh there were these really big gusts of winds coming through super big man it was so windy and i caught these low spots and i was like okay it started calming down and it got real calm and i tried to pull a ninja move and i'm like all right 
I told the mechanic, I said, go ahead and start the lift. Let's run it. I made that decision because I was a supervisor. So I made that decision. Start the lift. Let's run it. Okay, he goes over, starts a lift real quick. That train comes up and over. There was no wind. Perfectly smooth. It's like, okay. Goes into that first loop. Big gust of wind comes. And I'm holding on to the block brake and it's pushing me back into the brake a little bit. I'm like, oh my gosh. At the slowest point, of course, at the very top of the loop and stuff like that. And then there was another, as it went up into the next loop, it was a big gust of wind again. And I was just like, oh my gosh. As I'm standing in the block break, it's got this, what do they call that? It's like a, it kind of looks like a serpentine roll or something like that. Comes in one direction, goes back out the same direction, but does two inversions in the middle of it. That train came up into that roll and I knew I was in trouble because when it came up into that roll, it was moving slow. And I heard all the chain dogs in any rollback start to clunk down on the other side. Normally you have enough momentum to where they don't clunk. They always stay down. Um, but this time I heard all of them clunk. As the train went up right in front of me, I heard it go clunk, 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 clunk. And I was like, oh crap, that's not good. And it went, it went down, it went through the saddle, and then it went up to go over the next inversion, almost made it halfway, and then came back. And it sat right there in that saddle. And I'm just like, oh, man. There's nothing you can do at that point in time. Nothing you could do at all. We had to wait all the way through the day. Of course, the ride was down all day. And then we had to wait at nighttime and then I worked overnight with a crew of people overnight and we literally dismantled the train on the track as it sat right there. We dismantled the train and took it off coach by coach and then put it behind the work bay and then we spent the next couple of days reassembling it before it could run again and then we had to go through and retest everything and basically recertify the train that it was okay to go after that. But that was my one time I ever valleyed a train just off of a bad call. I've seen other trains valleyed before, but they're typically, uh, most of the time they're on wooden roller coasters. Woody's valley a lot because they, they don't have a lot of energy to give back from the track, so it doesn't take much to valley a wooden roller coaster, but as the first big steel roller coaster I've seen valleyed, and I did it, unfortunately. But those things happen. Those are the calls. I mean, I made a call. It's all I could have done, but I did it. But um, I know a lot of people are thinking right now, it's like, nope, nope. Had there been people on this, nope, they would have been evacuated prior to anything. Like, we wouldn't, I wouldn't try to move vehicles around like that if they were loaded. So that's not even a question. But these are the crappy times you have to deal with sometimes as a mechanic. But that stuff comes to haunt you. Anyways, I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Hope this was useful to somebody. Maybe the next time it's uh, really windy and you don't understand why that ride is not running, um, just think it's, it might be because of that wind. They don't want it to ride in the wind. I know uh, some of the things, like some of the bigger, the bigger the ride is, the more susceptible it is to wind, too. Like uh, really big uh, wing style rides, they do not like wind at all because there's a lot of surface area to catch them and slow them down. Nobody wants a valley coaster. Trust me, it sucks. Anyways, I'm Ryan the Ride Mechanic. Have a good day. As always, like and subscribe. Take care.